There's no proof whatsoever that medications help anybody heal from ADHD. Financial stress on the parents translates into physiological stress in the children. Poor kids are much more likely to be diagnosed with ADHD. I'm telling you, if your friend's got ADHD, I can tell you he had a stress to relieve for you. One of the really interesting things I wanted to talk to you about is, is ADHD. Yeah. Um, I've had a few of my friends in my close friendship circle diagnosed with ADHD recently. Mm -hmm. um, and then I looked into some of the statistics around ADHD. Um, and I found this statistic that said in the 1980s, one in 20 US children were diagnosed with ADHD. Today, yeah. the number is roughly one in nine. Yeah. Um, and just generally, you know, around me, there's, it feels like, and this could just be because of my own little narrow circle, yeah. or it could be because of a wider thing happening in society. It feels like there's been an increase in diagnosis of mental illness and things like ADHD. And the cause is, when I spoke to my friend about what he believed the cause of um, his ADHD was, and he's posted this on LinkedIn and talks about it very publicly now, um, it seemed to point to, he seemed to believe it was relating to some kind of genetic or yeah. heritable um, factor. Yeah. Now, the issue, the issue that I've sort of been contending with myself and why I spoke to Johan Hari about this and others about this is, if I, if I am to accept that, then I, am, I feel like I'm accepting that we're being born somewhat broken. And this is almost what Johan Hari talked about in, in the early stages of his teenage years, where yeah. he, he was made to believe that there was this chemical imbalance in his brain and therefore he was born broken and here's the medication to solve it. Yeah. So, but I don't, want, I don't believe that. I don't, I don't personally believe that we're, we're born broken. Well, um, anybody interested in the subject might do what I think Johan actually did is to read my book on ADHD. It's called Scattered Minds. And um, I was diagnosed within my 50s and so were a couple of my kids. But, but I never bought into the idea this is a genetic disease or that it's a disease at all, genetic or otherwise. Um, now, as for the rising number of um, people being diagnosed with it, there could be two reasons, at least. One is we're better at diagnosis, so before we wouldn't have noticed it, but now we are. Or genuinely, there's more people who are having trouble in certain ways, such as with attention and impulse control and so on. But either way, the fact is that many more children are being diagnosed and medicated for this condition, particularly in the US, but also increasingly uh, here in the UK as well, and in China and elsewhere. Now, um, as I said earlier, if we, <clears throat> the, the fact is, here's the actual reality. Nobody's ever found a gene for ADHD. Nobody's ever found a gene that says, if you have this gene, you're gonna have ADHD. No such gene has ever been found. No group of genes has ever been found that says, if you're gonna have this gene, you're gonna have this condition, nor ever will be. And no such gene or group of genes have ever been found that if you don't have these genes, you will not have the condition. Now, there are some diseases that are genetic. One runs in my family, muscular dystrophy. If you have the gene, you're gonna have the disease. My mother had it, my aunt had it. That's a genetic condition. And if you have a, the gene, you'll have the disease. Very rare, those kind of diseases. Now, now, there are some genes that the more of them you have, the more likely you are to have any number of mental health diagnoses, ADHD, depression, anxiety, um, even psychosis, bipolar illness. But there's no group of genes or set of genes or gene that themselves determine any one condition. As a matter of fact, you can have those same genes and not have any condition whatsoever. So something is being passed on, but it's not any kind of condition that's being passed on. What's being passed on is sensitivity. And the more sensitive you are, the more you're gonna feel whatever's going on in the environment. So you take the same sensitive kid with these genes that confer greater sensitivity out of them, and sensitive means to feel, from the Latin word to feel, sincere. The more sensitive you are, the more you're gonna feel. The more you feel, the more bad stuff happens, the more pain you're gonna be in, and the more compensating you're gonna to have to do. At the same time, with those same genes, if you treat it well and you grow up in a healthy environment, you just be creative and happy and joyful and a leader or an artist or a shaman or, or a very creative CEO or whatever you're gonna be. So the genes don't determine. They make you more sensitive to their environment. No. If you go back to what I said about the tuning out, it's simply a defense. So the more sensitive you are, and the stress in the environment, 
the more you're gonna feel the stress, the more you're gonna need to escape from it by tuning out. So you didn't inherit ADHD, you inherited a sensitivity that makes it more likely under stressful circumstances that you will revert to tuning out when your brain is developing, which by the way, is an organ that develops physiologically under the impact of the emotional environment. So if there's a lot of stress in a child's life, and what I'm saying is in this society, is that more and more parents are stressed, not because they don't love their kids, not because they're not doing their very utmost to provide for them, but because they're more stressed for all kinds of social, political, economic reasons. I mean, if you look at inflation in Britain, which is a high risk right now, more people are gonna be stressed financially. Financial stress on the parents translates into physiological stress in the children. Those children may want to tune out because it's too much to be in the present. Some of them will be diagnosed with ADHD. They didn't inherit anything in terms of a disease. They're just reacting to the environment. So if we're diagnosing more and more kids these days, I think it's because the parenting environment has become much more stressed. And that's backed up in this book where you mentioned that study of 65,000 parents yeah. um, and their children with ADHD, right? You say... Uh, well, there's more trauma in their lives. Yeah, so, so, so the children, yeah, have, they do a yeah. study with 65,000? I forget, uh, you're better than it I It was 65,000, I, okay, yeah. I read it three you made hours notes, ago. I did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but many thousands of kids, yeah. So, because I found that to be really, really sort of um, supportive of what you just said, where, uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this from memory, but a study of 65,000 um, children and their parents, and they found that those parents who had more adverse um, traumatic events in their lives ended up having having a higher chance of having a child that had ADHD. Well, look, if you look at um, the United States, at least, poor kids and kids of so-called color are much more likely to be diagnosed with ADHD. Interesting. No, why would that be the case? Because they're living with so much more stress. Men as well, right? Men as well? Adults, you mean? Men, yeah. So I read that more men, or more boys Yeah, more men are diagnosed partly because in men, the, the the symptom of hyperactivity seems to be there more often. So when a kid is sitting in school and they can't sit still, that's obvious. The teacher will notice it. The girl who's kind of dreamy and tunes out, kind of fades away at the back of the class, she doesn't create any problems. So they don't, they, they, that's one of the reasons. But also, um, funny to say, but young boys, infant boys are more sensitive to environmental, environmental pressure than girls are for some strange reason. So they're more likely to be affected by these factors. Seeing a boy like that in the class that's yeah. fidgety, that has a, a poor attention yeah. span, bad response to stress, we medicate. Mm -hmm. What is the impact of that approach to treatment? Medicating super early. I used to, when I worked as a physician, I would certainly prescribe medication sometimes. Um, it's a question of who's prescribing it and with what intention. If I understand that the real problem in this child is not that there's anything intrinsically wrong with the child, but that they were developed in a stressed environment, and those stresses are still acting on them. And one of the stresses is the parents don't understand the kids' behaviors and they tend to react rather harshly. Then if I change, if I can help the ch parent understand the sensitive nature of their child, which also means that when positive changes occur in the environment, the kid will be very responsive to that as well. If the parents can create a positive, accepting, understanding atmosphere in the home and work on their own stresses so they don't unconsciously pass them on to their kids, that kid will change very quickly. And I say, well, if in the short term, the child wants the medication to function better and no child should be forced to take medication and medication are never the final answer that the very most they're a stopgap. There's no proof whatsoever that medications help anybody heal from ADHD. They simply suppress symptoms, which may be helpful in the short term, but for God's sakes, go to work on the long-term development of that child. And what does that mean? Create the conditions in which healthy development takes place. That child will do very, very well. If you think the problem is a disease, they're just gonna medicate away the symptoms of what about for adults though? My, my, I'm thinking of my friend there. He's he's in his 30s and yeah. he got the diagnosis of ADHD in his 30s. Yeah. He's been given this medication, which he presumably has to take for life. He's told me the medication has help, helped him focus. Has helped him focus. Has helped him focus. Yeah, it's yeah. been a game changer, Steve, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've taken medication myself for ADHD and it helped me focus. It helped me write my first book. Um, I didn't take it for this one. As a matter of fact, 
more recently, when, when I was beginning to write the medication, I thought maybe I would take a bit of stimulant, like I used to, and just to see if it helps me write the book better. All it did, all it did is give me side effects. My brain has changed. I don't need it anymore, you know? So I, I, I would say to your friend, if the medication is helping you right now and it's not causing you side effects, I got nothing against it. And you might want to give it a break every, you know, every weekend. If you don't, you know, you might want to use it for when you're having to work or having to, you know, really concentrate, but it's up to you. If it helps you function, take it, but go to work on the traumas and stresses that are driving your ADHD going back to your childhood. And, you know, I may say in my book on ADHD, Scattered Minds does outline some ways to do that. Um, you might find that you don't need the medication uh, so much anymore or not at all, perhaps. Number one. Number two, even if you do, your life will be so much fuller and so much more um, less stressed if you deal with the underlying factors than if you simply medicate the symptom. Like I'm telling you, if your friend's got ADHD, I can tell you he had a stressed early for years and his parent was, her parents were stressed, his parents were stressed. So deal with that. Deal with what conditions are you creating now in your life that create more stress for you. Are you taking care of your body? Are you exercising? Are you eating well? Do you get out there in nature? Nature has a certain kind of harmony to it, which actually calms the mind, you know? So are you doing all these things? If you're not, all you're doing is medicating a symptom. If you are taking the medication specifically to help you focus, but you're working on these other issues, you'll have a much fuller life and you may find you don't need the medication after all. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests. Uh -huh.